How's it going, everybody? Today is uh, November 21st, and uh, this is going to be the first video that we have done in a very long time. It's been at least six months since I've done any videos with Caramel, and I kind of wanted to explain what happened and uh, where we're kind of at uh, with her and, and the channel. So about six or seven months ago was our last video. I had just finished publishing it and I thought to myself, oh, it's time to get her her shots, get her her uh, get her her uh, kennel cough medication. And uh, so I took her to the vet along with my other dogs. I took scheduled all my dogs to go get uh, get their shots and their daily on their yearly checkup. And so I was also going to schedule her to get fixed. So that way she was going to get spayed. And, um, we walked in and everything went fine. All the dogs got their shots. All of them got their checkup. When the vet checked on caramel, she said, it sounds like she, I thought I, I thought I heard a heart murmur. And I didn't, and I, and she listened to it again. She goes, no, you know what? Maybe not. And so we, we just went about like normal. We didn't think anything of it. And we went, we went about just, uh, get it, finishing up the checkup. I, she's one of two dogs that I, I take to, to, to get groomed. Um, and I, and she also goes to the dog park. Ow, ow, ow. So I wanted her to have her kennel cough medication. And, uh, ow. You just want to play. You just want to play now. See? Oh. So then, you know, two days pass. She gets her kennel cough medication. She gets all her shots. Checkup is clear, except for that weird heart murmur thing. But... Again, the vet thought maybe it was just because she was super excited, nervous, and shaking that most likely it, she didn't really hear it. So we let it go. And then two days later, she started coughing. A really dry, hacking cough that I just didn't understand what was going on. She also started feeling a little warmer to the touch. And so I... I Looked online and found that the, one of the side effects for the kennel cough uh, medicine is is um, coughing. So they 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 form a small cough, and uh, that's one of the side effects. So I, I attributed to that. It said give it a couple days, and if it doesn't clear up, re retake them back to the vet. So I scheduled the vet appointment anyway. And they weren't able to see her for three days. So I said, okay. So it ended up being, she ended up having this cough for seven days. Took her to the vet on the seventh day. On the seventh day, it was really bad. It was all night long. She sleeps right next to me. So I literally heard her coughing all night long. And it kind of made me really worried. And I was getting nervous. And so when I took her in, the vet re-listened to her, took her temperature, and uh, she re reaffirmed, oh, it, it has to be, it sounds like a heart murmur. And so I got really nervous at that point. I was not at the vet. My, my wife took her. I had to work that day, so, and I couldn't get out. So uh, she, my wife took her, and I talked to her while we kind of did like a FaceTime on our phones while she was at the vet. I was really ner worried for her, nervous. And the vet said, okay, uh, it sounds like a heart murmur after all. We're going to need to do a bunch of tests. Uh, it's like an EKG or ECG, and then um, you're going to need to do an X-ray and a ultrasound. And I said, oh, sh <laughs> I'm not a rich man. And so once I hear ultrasound, I already know I'm going to be paying a bunch of money. And one of the cool things about the vet is they normally give you a printout of all the procedures they're going to be doing, plus the prices for those procedures. And they, sure enough, <laughs> everything was expensive except 
the ECG was not that expensive or EKG was not that expensive. It was only like about $65, but everything else was in the hundreds. X-rays were in the hundreds. Ultrasound was ridiculously expensive. Um, total bill was going to come up to something like $1,500. And so I told her, told the doctor, look, let's do the EKG first or the ECG. I can't remember which one it was. EKG, ECG first. And then we'll do the x-ray because I want to I want to x-ray her anyway to see if there's anything else in there. And so she's like, OK, we can do that. And I said, if if it does show that she does have a. Um, if she does have any kind of heart problems, then we'll do the ultrasound. So if the EKG comes back showing heart problems, we'll do the ultrasound. And uh, so. All those testing happens. Um, there was like a line or, or a long wait for the individual that listens to the ECG. And he ended up taking, or she ended up taking forever. Oh, do you hear something? What do you hear? Come here. That's all right. And so it took about four and a half hours before we got the full results back. Oh, and blood work. We had to do the blood work also. So the blood, so the uh, the first thing that came back actually was um, the X-ray. The X-ray came back, and the it turns out that she had the, the diagnosis was that she ended up having a collapsed trachea. So that doesn't that didn't change the fact that the vet heard a heart murmur. So she could have a collapsed trachea and a heart murmur and some kind of congenitive heart failure or something like that, which I'm going to tell you folks, the worst thing you can do as a pet owner that has some kind of illness is to look the illness up on, on Google. It is the biggest mistake I made. Um, and you'll, you'll see that through, that will be the, the theme of this entire video is me looking up whatever the doc tells me. And me panicking for for days and days about this. So the vet, we were on FaceTime, my wife and I, the vet calls us back in. We go back to the vet. Turns out she doesn't have a heart murmur. The EKG was clean. What she was hearing was the actual um, collapsed trachea. And so if people don't know, and I didn't know this, but smaller dogs have this thing and even bigger older dogs can get this condition where the trachea starts to collapse from the top down and it looks like a it looks like the like normally it's a tube and instead of it being a tube for dogs it more looks like a c or the letter d with the with this you know the dip going downwards um the top part actually starts to sag and actually can start to shrink the, can actually, it starts to sag and it starts to shrink down the, uh, the flap of skin, causing him to have a hard time breathing. It causes massive coughing. And in her case, she can't get too excited anymore. Uh, she can still play a little bit and she can run around and stuff, but she, she has a hard time breathing. And you'll hear her during the next videos that I'm going to be doing. You'll hear her cough every once in a while, and when she, especially when she gets excited. I had never heard of this before in any dog that I've ever owned, and I have two other Chihuahuas, and none of them have this. <clears throat> and she's so young. And when I looked this up on Google, it literally said she had two to four years to live. the The average life it said the average lifespan for a dog with a collapsed trachea is two to four years. And I panicked. I was so scared for her. I didn't want to do any videos. I didn't want to, to I didn't want her to, sh to, to look like that on, on any video. I didn't want to talk about any of you. I was so scared for her. And, and I, I just thought it was so unfair that a young dog can, can die in two to four years before, from this, from this, this, this uh, illness or this disease or this condition. And the vet really didn't help me any. She just gave me a medication. The, she gave us this medication. It's more, it's kind of like a cough syrup that 
she said was she was going to have to take the rest of her life. And when you look up the cough syrup, it's all these things that have to do with improving breathing. Um, and and I was I was kind of shocked by it. And the way that she made it, it sounded so fatal to me, the way that the, the vet put it. Oh, she's going to have to take this medication for the rest of her life. She's going to have to have, she's going to have a hard time breathing. Make sure, you know, she doesn't wear any kind of a collar with, and, and don't pull on it with the leash. And, and, and I was so scared for her. I, felt, I was really depressed about it. So fast forward a week after that vet, my dog is still coughing, still terribly sounding. And I'm panicking. You know, two to four years lifespan is not long for, you know, to me, a dog that lasts 13 years is still not long enough. I, you know, I wish they had the lifespan of a human, but unfortunately they don't. And if you shrink that down to two to four years, that's horrible. And, and, I, and I, I felt so bad for her that I wanted a second opinion. So seven days later, I, I finally talked to my sister who has other dogs and she lives a little bit further away from us. And she has a different vet. And she told me, take your dog to my vet. And I said, okay. I scheduled a second opinion. I got all the paperwork transferred over. Got the x-rays transferred over. And when her when her video, I mean, uh, when her appointment came up, my wife took the dog. Unfortunately, once again, I couldn't go because I had to work. But we were able to FaceTime. And that veterinarian, I have to say, was the best veterinarian I've ever been to. He took 25 minutes out of his day to sit down with my dog and explain to me and my wife all the things about the the situation she was going to be going through and all of this, the problems and all the all the difficulties she was going to have. And, and then he made me feel so much better. He told me he had never had to put a dog down for, you know, for a collapsed trachea, which to me, a veterinarian saying that makes me felt a whole better, a lot better because Google sure as hell scared the, sh the hell out of me. Two to four years was, was something that to me was unthinkable. And, and it, uh, to me, I've, I've, I, I, I felt defeated and I felt so bad for her. But hearing the veterinarian tell me that he had never had to put a dog down for this condition and that she would have a, 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 a long, she would still have a long and fruitful life. Uh, he recommended, he actually ended up giving her steroids and antibiotics. Um, that is what helped immensely. I started giving her the steroids and the antibiotics uh, that night. And by the next day, her coughing had almost disappeared. And uh, it just got better and better over time. I don't know what it was that the other vet, why the other vet didn't give it to her because she suffered for seven more days with it. But but after the steroids and the antibiotics, she felt much better. We were able to take her out again. She could actually go for walks again. And I feel so much better about the condition she has. I understand the condition now. And I feel better about her her outlook. Um, I still want to do these videos going forward because really I love this dog. This dog has changed my, my mindset about chihuahuas. She is one of the nicest chihuahuas I've ever met. Uh, I love all my dogs, but she's just so different in her personality and her attitude. Uh, especially when it comes to people, she runs up to everybody and anybody and, and loves to play with them and talk to them. So I, I, I want to continue to do these videos going forward. I want to to document all the fun that me and her have. Uh, so, I mean, if her lifespan is shortened by a few years, so be it. But at least I'll have the memories of these videos to 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 enjoy going forward and to to remember her by. And so, um, I don't I, I I foresee her living a very long time, and I'm going to try to make her live a very long time. Uh, and, and I'm going to document the whole thing. And hopefully you guys will enjoy watching it and uh, participate with us. If you have any comments or, or questions about collapsed trachea, I highly recommend you do look it up on the Internet. But do not, 
Do not look it up and then start feeling defeated right away. Don't get into any kind of depression like I did. Go straight to your vet and then demand that your vet explain to you the 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 outcome of everything that's happening with this. And she is so cute. Look at her sleeping. Uh, but feel free if uh, you ever have any questions or comments about caramel uh, or about her condition, feel free to ask me. I may not be an expert on it, but... I feel like I learned quite a bit. Um, thanks a bunch, everybody, for watching. And uh, I hope uh, 2022 is going to be a better year for us. Thanks a bunch. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. You take me